Hey, I have a quick question for this next shot. Uh, just, is it for camera, is it a problem if I bring the thunder? <laughs> I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on the show, we will be trying three celebrity wines that have a unique connection to our special guest, Danny Jollis. You may know Danny from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Everything But the Scores with Danny Jollis, or most recently, You Choose, an interactive comedy special here on YouTube. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. Here's Danny Jollis. Hello. As you probably just heard in the intro, I said that we are going to have three celebrity wines, three celebrity wines that have a significant connection to you Ooh. as far as how I see you and what I know of you. Okay. Now, we met on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. That's how I first knew you. That's true. But I am now a Danny Jollis fan. Aww. So I've been to shows. I listen to your podcast. I've watched your special. Thank you. So Thank tell you me a little that. bit Tell me a little uh, bit about this wide variety of things that you do. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's what Hollywood is, baby. I think that um, the more things you're doing out here, the better. I also think that like until your career gets crazy. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm doing this. That's all they do, but it's like until your career gets crazy busy, it's mm -hmm. like you kind of do everything. People always ask me, they're like, they're like, so stand up or acting, like, mm -hmm. oh, and I'm like, I've never had to choose. Well, we're gonna get back to the stand up stuff. I want to okay. start at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah, of course. You're from Virginia. From Virginia. I was born in D.C. Really? Yeah. Did we talk? about I this tried before? to wear a commander shirt for you, but I couldn't get it in time. Ah, oh, left hand <laughs> up. Who are so... we? Commanders. Um, Where are you from? I was born in Georgetown University Hospital, but we lived in like Maryland, like Bethesda at the yeah, time. Yeah, so that's where so. my parents live now. Oh, okay. I've always said like I'm a true DMV because I was born in DC, spent my first two years in Maryland. Oh, and amazing. And then went to Fairfax County. And Virginia. you were there till you went to college, till right? I went to college. Now that's where this next little bit comes in. Okay. You were a theater major, am I right? I was. Is Double it? major in political science. Oh, well, there you go. A little bit of smarts. Did you do musical theater or just uh, acting theater? When I auditioned for NYU, I auditioned with musical. So there's a thing called Cap 21 if you go to NYU, which is like true musical theater. And I was like, I don't, because I can't dance, mm. I feel that this is a, a problem. And mm -hmm. I kind of already knew, like, ah, I think comedy. So I was like, let's not do that. But then I went to the Strasbourg, which was just acting, but had a strong musical theater element to okay. it. And so I was singing and dancing all through college. Amazing. But I was not technically a musical theater major. The very first wine okay. comes from another theater slash musical theater actory kind of person, In Vivo X SJP, Sarah Jessica Parker. Wow. Who partnered with In Vivo to do a Sauvignon Blanc and a Rosé. Oh, and it's a twist off. I oh, love I, twist off. God, I love twist off. Do you, do you drink wine? Are you a wine drinker? Yeah. Nice. It makes me very sleepy. Ah. So that's my only concern with wine always. But then I like it. Y yeah. There is a great feeling to going to bed and just being like, oh, I drank wine. I'm going to pass I'm just going to go to sleep. Two, and so. are you a drink after a show or is it like no shows or when I don't drink kind of thing? No, I'll yeah, drink no rules. before shows I drink Amazing. on stage. I, I, <laughs> you do comedy long enough where like alcohol just no longer affects you. I'm not proud of this. It's not recommended. <laughs> but I have done stand up like very, very drunk. Mm. And then I'll listen back to it because I always record myself when I do stand up. Uh, and I'll listen back to it and I'll be like. Regrettable. No. Oh. That's the sad part is I'll be like. Pretty good. Oh, <laughs> see, and I'm close, not that pretty way. Pretty close to what I was. Like, it's a little, it, like, I can hear it, but, like, the crowd does not pick up on it. Whereas marijuana no cannot good for perform you. on marijuana. I was like, I'm gonna, I'll give it a shot one time. And I was like, I was so in my head. Was it funny at all? No, I was miserable. <laughs> I was so, like, I got through it. Like, every oh. laugh felt like an attack. I couldn't figure oh out. God. I was just so in my head. And I was like, never again. I walked off stage like, never again. Well, we're going to get you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll just pour a little sample parts, but you can have more of anything you like. So, have you done the official wine tasting thing before in life? So Jess, my wife, likes to go to wineries. So mm. we have done that. Okay. I've never once done it where I felt like it did anything for me. Ah, yes. But feel free to teach me what you well, Okay, so what I know is, I've learned a little over the years, but I started this show because I'm like, I don't get it. I was in that same thing, like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. So... You swirl it, swirl it to get like air in it to just like open up the aromas and because we taste with our smell a lot. Sure. And then this is the one I can't figure out. They're always like, look at it. Oh, it's like, oh, it's kind of pretty. It's like a kind sure. of a, I don't know, grayish yellow <laughs> color. Like it looks like a white wine. So it is a white. What's a white? It's a Sauvignon Blanc in particular from New Zealand. 
Ooh. Mm -hmm. So then they, you smell it, and they say you should smell three different things. One is like a fruit. One is like maybe spices or something, and then any sometimes things are just weird things like a piece of wood or something. Right. So well, it's a big about the barrel. Sometimes this it's is the barrel. I tell you a lot mm -hmm. about. If you go to the wineries, they're very into their barrels and what goes into the barrel with the wine. Oh, yeah. Huge part of it. Okay, give it a sniff and tell me if you smell anything. And this is the part where I'm always like, I have no clue. But to me, it smells like wine. Oh, okay. Like it smells distinctly like a wine. The thing I smell, and I'll say this and see if you smell it. Okay. I smell like tire treads. Tire treads? Like rubber tires. It's the very first thing I smelled. And I don't think they put anything like that say, in the wine. In there, but you don't know what's in the barrel. <laughs> it just got white wine. It just smells like a white wine. Okay. But I say that with love. This estrogen. No, of I'm course. Sure there's very specific notes of, th of things. Do we know what we're supposed to smell? You know, here's the thing. It probably says somewhere on the bottle, but I've gotten to that point where my eyesight. Do you read this stuff ever out loud? I Generally don't. Welcome to a most exciting wine collaboration. This New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc was made to a special blend created by Sarah Jessica Parker with the fellas and in vivo. Mm -hmm. The result, a tropical style okay. with a smooth and long finish. A versatile wine that's great with food or on its own. Okay. And we'll be doing it with food. So yeah, didn't say anything about other than tropical. They mentioned tropical. No tire treads. So let's give it out here and cheers. And Thanks cheers. for doing the show. Oh my gosh, of course. All right. What the hell kind of tropical fruit is it smells like rubber? Rubber tree plant, that sounds tropical to me. Fruity. Yeah, yeah. I'd say fruity. A little tart fruity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like lemony. I don't know my tropical fruits that well. Maybe a mango? I don't know the specifics. This is where I'm going to fall apart. I don't know the specifics, but what I do know is smooth. Yep. And that's what they said. They, they said, said smooth. smooth. Yep. They said it'd be smooth. They did. It is smooth. Sarah and, her, and the fellas. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and pair the food now. So what I do is I go on the internet and be like, hey, internet, what's good with this? Sure. So what the internet said was herbed goat cheese on a costini. Herbed goat cheese? Yes. What a strong flavor. Yeah. So give it a whirl. Get yourself one and I'll grab one and then taste it. Mm. Crunchy. Mm. Very good. Mm cool. I thought you'd hurt yourself. No. I, I milked excited. the goat myself. Unbelievable. Incredible yeah, it, work. Mm, well, that's good. It's Absolutely delicious. herbed goat cheese, which a lot of wines are good with goat cheese, I've learned over the years. Really? Mm-hmm. Anything white or pink, you're pretty much safe to go with a goat cheese. All right. Um, taste your wine. Yeah, yeah. No. You shouldn't be sorry, ever. It's wine. It's very welcoming. I apologize for nothing. I was slow mm. on the wine. The goat cheese is really doing wonder. Do you think the, the wine is better with the goat cheese or without it? I think everything's better with food. Mm. So I think that's going to be just kind of a general stance of mine. Okay. Do you usually drink your wine with food or no? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because you want to have like wine with something. When I first started dating my wife, back when she would do self tapes. It's sad that you had to date your wife. Well. Because if she's your wife. Yeah, you would think. But back no. when she was just my girlfriend. <laughs> so initially when she started dating me, something you have to do sometimes is self tapes. Back in the day, it wasn't as common. Mm. But you have to do self-tapes sometimes. She didn't like doing self-tapes. Still doesn't like doing She didn't like being the reader for you on yeah, the other yeah, side. Yeah, she doesn't oh. like She gets very frustrated with me. So we sort of started this thing where it was like self-tape and wine, where I would buy a bottle of wine, we would do a self-tape together. That was like a tradition we had going. <laughs> and did that loosen her up or make it your memorization her a, better? Her, I think it gave her a reward for what she found to be a very <laughs> unfun activity. Okay. So she would do it then. That's kind of nice. Jess works in development, and so she sometimes gives very good notes, sometimes gives very studio notes, which I'm like, you know, the thing about me is, like, I like to make choices in my mm -hmm. self-tapes. Sometimes you're sending stuff in, and you're like, they have no clue who I am. They have no clue why, why to pay attention to tapes. So I'm like, let me give them a choice. Let mm -hmm. me give them a very specific version of this character. If they like it, great. If they don't, move on with your life. Now, do you, did you book more when it was in person? or do you, Yeah. I have struggled so much booking off, off self tapes mm -hmm. because I can't, I don't know how you get any sense of what I do. So if I go in a room, even if we, even if I get no notes, even though I just do it twice, I'm going to give you two different reads. I'm going to do something interesting. Do it. You're also going to get to meet me. Yeah. I'm friendly you're guy. like, I'm so charming. I, I can be yeah. decently charming. Mm -hmm. All these things are now gone. Yeah. And now what you're getting is everybody's 75th take. You know, there used to be just a thing of like, you get one shot, you walk in the room, one shot. How you doing? Here we go. I either know it or I don't. Boom. So I, Hate the self tapes. Can't stand them. Okay. But we would do wine with it. Here's two. Real in the room. Audition's coming back. For the love of God. All right. So, like I said, the wines are all based on characteristics of Danny Jealous. We just did theater. Theater. Now we're doing sports. Let's go. Well, first, tell me a little bit about, not that I don't know because I've literally listened to every episode. Tell them a little bit about 
Everything But The Scores. Everything But The Scores is my podcast I do every week. It is about all the stories around sports. So if you watch sports, great. It's all the stories they don't talk about as much. If you don't watch sports, you'll be able to keep up with everything. It's very fun. We have usually a guest. Sometimes we don't, but usually we have a guest. Mm -hmm. And they sit opposite me, and sometimes they know a ton about sports. Sometimes they know nothing. It, but it truly is a great show to listen to if you know nothing about sports. I come home to him all the time going, oh my god, we got to look up this one hockey guy. I forget what they're called, but they're those little like side pinch hitter players in hockey. Emergency backup goalies. That's what I was saying. The greatest thing in sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a, yeah, the goalies that are just sitting in the side who are supposed to never play, who are just like an accountant or something. They're, yeah. Uh, they are not supposed but every now and then they will get forced in the game. It is great stuff. It's great uh, stuff. How has a movie not been made about it? I've you can been, play the guy. I've been pitching. If anybody's watching this who works in Hollywood, the amount of time I have spent trying to pitch sports around this town and watch people be like, it doesn't really work on TV. And I'm like, it's ironic you say that because it is the biggest market. True. By leaps and bounds, it's not even close. Why don't we try it happens probably every two to three years. A situation I'm getting like goosebumps the against thinking about the guy because it's you did you literally tear up when oh the, the interviews at the end of the game. So yes. grateful. The players are, are so, so excited nice. for them because they're like this guy has no business being in this game. And they get in basically if enough other players get injured. Every team carries two goalies on their team. Every stadium has a third goalie who is literally sitting up top eating popcorn. Who if the first goalie gets hurt has to go to the back put on equipment in case, for some inexplicable reason, the second goalie gets hurt. They can go to either team. Oh my God, they I don't even remember that team. part. They work for the stadium, basically, wow. to go in the game. And then every now and then they go in. The last one that happened, whenever it was, was like end of last season. He actually was a practice goalie as well for the other team. He went against that team, but they all knew him. So they oh. were like kind of rooting for him too. So I think they scored one goal on him, but like you could see they were rooting for him <laughs> a little bit. Like they, everyone gets very pumped. It's a very cool it's very sports awesome. moment that very rarely happens and nobody talks about it. So with that, I know yes. that you know, you have a deep bed of knowledge on sports. Very, mm. very deep. This particular wine comes from an athlete. Ooh. This is the 2020 Three by Wade Rosé. This is Dwayne Wade's. Oh. Winery, three-time NBA champ, 12-time NBA All-Star mm -hmm. player. I'm not always not a sports person. I was a big 90s basketball girl. I mean, we're talking like Suns and sure. Chicago Bulls. And, mm -hmm. and I lived in Phoenix at the time, and it was just... So that's during Barkley? Mm -hmm. That is when Barkley came to town and spat on somebody. And I was like, who does this guy think he is? Mm -hmm. And then there was suddenly like a fight on the court between two teams. And I was like, this is ridiculous, but I surely tuned in for the next episode, episode <laughs> game. Yeah, yeah. And then I became really hooked. I became a huge Charles Barkley fan. Love him. That whole vibe he did of like, I'm not a role model. I'm like, no, that's fair. You're a basketball player. You're doing your job. At the time, Charles Barkley, for those that are not sports, Charles Barkley was ridiculed at the time because he came out and he was like, I'm not a role model. I'm a professional athlete. Why would you teach your kids to treat me as a role model? Mm -hmm. At the time, absolutely destroyed for it mm -hmm. over the course of the past two decades has turned into one of the most insightful correct statements mm -hmm. and he ironically during that time has turned into an incredible role model i'm a fan and i started out with that with that like the public but heard that's true this of a lot of athletes. yeah Dwayne wade kind of hated out of the gates by a lot of people really but he um he is proven to be an incredibly smart guy. He's handled a, a child situation really well. He's just done a lot of things like really well spoken on a lot of great topics. Dwayne Wade has proven to be a sensational person. Well, I hope you like this wine. Part. And I always say these things with the addendum of like, anything can come out of anybody any moment. Sure, sure, sure. But as of right now, Dwayne Wade. So far stacking up And was up hated well. out of the gate. All right, let's smell it and see if we smell anything and then taste it. Oh, okay. I smelled three championships. Mm-hmm. Very supportive father. Very supportive father. I smell something savory. Like it's not as fruity. It's more like a yes. savory smell. It's more savory, which mm -hmm. is interesting because mm -hmm. you think it'd be sweeter. You think. More coloring. Right. But Maybe. I think that's what roses are like a trick pony because it could be sweet. And yeah. I don't think this, I know what, this was from Napa. So it's a California rose. Beautiful color. Thin's in Napa. Oh, and do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Is that one of the wineries you and just went we to, went to We went to Napa once and then we went to a place we usually go, which is... <laughs> What's it called? One of the places near us, like two hours away. Oh, Solvang. No, Solvang, yeah. Oh, no, um, I smelled something else. Oh, this is embarrassing. Some of the pee. Paso Robles. Yes. Yes. That's where we go usually. Yes. 
Paso Robles is a little closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Napa, yeah. much more of like, you should go if you want to go. Napa yeah, Bay, Dwayne yeah. Wade. Go check out his winery. I'm sure yeah. it was a castle. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> for inexplicable reasons. But everything is built around wine. So it's like mm -hmm. they'll do normal things and then they'll just put the word wine in front of it. So it's like literally there was a wine castle we went to. Oh, we did and like wine, wine horseback riding. We did and... wine train. We're just chucking wine on activities. See, and I obviously I like wine. I have a whole show about yeah. it. But I can't do the all day wine tasting thing. I just can't. I'm like, that's just too much wine. I do enjoy it. You get an Uber and you just like let yourself have a day. And you just go from place to place. You have a little charcuterie at each one. <laughs> and you have a great time. All right, we're going to taste the Wade. All right. I'm okay with it. Now, I don't know what you expected for a rose. I like this. It does it's not nice. taste like a typical rose, though. And typical to you is going to be what? More fruity? Yes. Yeah, this is not very fruity at all. Not I mean, it, there's a fruit in it, but it's more but like it's a grapefruit. Cool, it tastes like a. Like a more masculine baller, athletic kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Like he bottled his sweat or something? Mm -hmm. like that. Kind mm -hmm. of. That's a little bit. It can yeah. be in the barrel. Yeah, and it's probably really good sweat. I mean, after all, he's a champion. What's it, what's it called again? Three it's called what? Three by Wade. Then there's, I think. Oh, is that because of the championships? Why we call it Oh three my by God, Wade? probably. <laughs> That's a really good guess. <laughs> <laughs> I had not put that together. I did not know why. DWadeSellers.com. DWadeSellers, yeah. Heck out of that. And so it's funny too because like sellers versus vineyard versus winery, there's a whole lot of stuff. Some people don't do their, don't even have a winery. Yes. They just make wine. And... Well, they'll just take from other places. Right. So there's like certain wineries you'll go to where if you do the tours, they'll be like, this part actually is for a different wine yeah. that we just do here. Yeah. And a lot of times when celebrities are involved, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. not usually a seller, like a D. Wade Sellers is an actual, yeah. like, that's the more expensive stuff, the D. Wade stuff. That's sure. the, and I love you. You could have that if I, if my show could afford it, but we're doing the um, approachable. Well, I just feel like Dwayne Wade should obviously give you a bottle of wine. I do think, yeah, his, Dwayne, I mean, feel free to. I feel like I've promoted think, you quite heavily during yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And, really and will you. again. And I'm, and I'm excited because when I taste celebrity wines, it's not always great. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's just a name on a bottle. But I actually really like this. Oh, yeah. For me, I'm fine with this. No, this is a great bottle. Mm -hmm. oh. I really like it. It's like a little tart, but not, not too tart where it bothers you. It's a genuinely great one. So what we're going to pair this with is prosciutto-wrapped melons. And I don't know what these are going to taste like. I literally just made them because the internet said to. So. I'm excited about it. We'll see. Cheers. All right, cheers. There you go. This confuses me. Yeah. Taste bud-wise. This yeah. is... It's, it's like it's the fine, sweet is too sweet almost. It's just like, you know when you have something you're like, oh, that's just two different tastes that are just now on top of each other. They're not like That was a little odd. But I think the prosciutto actually probably is going to pair well with this, it. Let's see if this knocks yeah. this wine mm -hmm. to another Take out the melon and try just the prosciutto. Can you do that legally? I actually think that was an okay pairing for me. I don't know what you thought of the wine afterwards. It, it made it like a little smoother, I guess. I don't know if it made any difference. I think the way he's carrying himself. It's just two different tastes. Yeah, I don't know if that's all that good together. But it's fine because this is good by itself. You said that you tend to do wine with food, and I was always like just alcohol in general, not with food for, for life. And then suddenly it was like, oh, well, I mean, people how are, are you, How are you doing that, though? Right, just you just get drunk, drunk fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five foot two, it doesn't take much. Yeah. But with that said, hmm. do you remember the first time you ever drank? Yes. So I didn't drink until college. At all? I grew up in Virginia, and I was very much like, I got to get out of here. And the way to get out of there was get to get into a college. So I got into NYU, and then first week, I was like, I'm not going to drink during the first week. Cause but you were already in. Already in college, but the first week, they were like, if we see you drink your week one, you know, the kids right out. So I was like, all right, I'm going to wait a week. College has a rule about drinking? <laughs> NYU, every college, I mean, technically, you're underage. You're wow. not supposed to drink. So they. That's they, right, kids. <laughs> I think when you go to, like... The cool schools, it's more okay. NYU is a genuinely... Arizona State. NYU is a very tough school to go to. Because like, you're not on a campus. You don't have like campus I police that are like... I also New York one time, which was for my audition. So I was like, very much like, okay, I'm wow, just like kind of what here. an education. So I was like, let me take a week and like just kind of get a sense of what this mm -hmm. is. And then it was my second week in NYU. I like drank for the first time. And I was very cautious out of the gates. And was it just a party? Somebody hooked it up? I think it was like in my room with my roommates. We still uh, have a group group thread going. Like, Amazing. These are like my freshman group that like stayed together. We all ended up working together post-college. Fair. I love those guys. And they were great. And that was the first time I drank was in a room with them. Wow. Them kind of being like, this is insane. And me being like, I know, it's crazy. And then we did it. 
that yeah. you might be the oldest of any guests so far on the show that I've asked. I was very cautious. I know. It's a, it's a crazy story. It's not very cool. No, it's fine. <laughs> you want to it's, know, it's you cool. some, you it's know cool something even lamer? Yes. I never done marijuana until the pandemic. You want to know something even lamer? Yeah. I've never done marijuana. Wow. I know. I'm wow. like a weird fossil. Did you ever bartend or any of those fun gigs? I've... I mean, this sounds like an insane thing to say. Somehow or another, you're the actor that never did that. Literally, I, I, waited, I was a waiter, but I always was like, oh, I'd love to be a bartender at a sports bar. The problem is, stand-up is a nighttime activity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could never really be waiter. Mm -hmm. Any of those jobs were kind of out for me because we have to work at night. That's true. So I worked at day, like actual day jobs because yeah. I was like, I can. it's easier to get out for an audition. Sure than it is to get out to do a set, yeah, like in the middle of a waiter set. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now that we're talking about comedy, I think it's really important that we move on to the next wine, so we'll be right back. <laughs> now we've moved on to the comedy portion of the program. Yeah. So I was able to find a winemaker that was in theater and a winemaker that was in sports, and do you know who the winemaker is that's in comedy? I'm trying to think of like who's the biggest entrepreneur of the comedy world, which would be Kevin Hart. He's yeah. doing a wine show. He's doing one where he, he drinks and he interviews people and gets them drunk and they talk, which is Smart. amazing. So Kevin, I mean, I get it. No, this is Eric Wareheim. Eric Wareheim, mm -hmm. let's go. This is a 2021 Waves red wine in a can. They said best served chilled, so that's what we're doing here. Smart. But he is known for Tim and Eric's awesome show. I'm most familiar with him from Masters of None. Tim and Eric is like one of the great success stories of the Adult Swim era. Yes. They would do these crazy shows, like Mike Tyson and his birds, and like it was an animated show that was like so funny. Now, have you ever met Mr. Warheim? I have not. Uh, I don't think I have. I've never really met either Tim. <laughs> shout out to Tim. Shared my special. And I was very grateful for it. You very never nice. met him, but he shared your special? He shared it on Twitter. Oh, he just like retweeted. Oh, shared it. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, how was he on stage with you and you didn't meet him? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Share, I'm sorry. He just like shared The world it. we're living in, that's yeah, so sad. Yeah, that yeah, just yeah. No, was the oldest thing I've ever it. said. No, 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 no. But he, so I, so I, I just very recently was like, Tim, I nice. Ah, oh, well that's He's awesome. Like, well, your special is freaking amazing. Thank you so much. So Tim, very high on my mind right now because of that. Never oh, well, that. good. Okay, well, this is his buddy. Is, you know, you know. His buddy yeah. The can artwork is by Jen Stark. I feel like the younger generation of winemakers are like, why can't wine art be cool? It for sure said that it was going to be slightly effervescent. I don't see the effervescence. Pretty color. It's oh my pretty. God. It's like a ruby. Ooh. That's nice. Fancy. I don't know what it's going to smell like. Um, kind of smells like feet. <laughs> what? Um, a little bit like feet. No. So, I mean, sometimes wine smells like feet. I will say it's a, it has a mix of red and white smell. Like, it doesn't smell like a typical red. No, it doesn't. All right, let's give it a taste, see what it tastes like. Kind of jammy, kind of berry-ish. Thoughts? Yeah. Aftertaste. Good aftertaste? Yes, but like a strong, like, secondary, jam like, yeah. said, like jammy, fruity feel. Now they did recommend serving this one chilled, which I don't always do with my reds. I feel like that's helping it a lot too. Yes. This would be a delicious popsicle. Yes, very sweet. Wow. Yeah. But I like it. Not sweet like that certain wine that I don't like to drink because it does taste like grape juice, like sugary Kool-Aid. It's Manischewitz? not that sweet. No, but I would love to try that on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's a great time. Moving back to this one though. So sorry. What these guys said pair with this is pizza. Pizza. And so, I made pizza today. Wow! Look but because that's very impressive. but because pizza can't sit out all day. It's we're doing cold pizza. Okay. Because you know I wanted your tummy to be safe. Love that for us. So have a piece of pizza. It says a margarita pizza. So pretty simple. I think it's going to be good. I can't wait. Pretty excited. Basil was growing in our backyard. Mm. Oh, growing in your backyard. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that's pretty cool. Well, pizza's good. I love cold pizza. Are you a cold pizza person or not a cold pizza person? I like cold pizza. Okay, I love cold pizza. I actually prefer cold pizza. It's a different meal to me. It's like, mm -hmm. there's pizza, and there's cold pizza. It's Agreed. Thing. Agreed. Like, do I like hot pizza more? Yeah, but cold pizza, it's like, I enjoy that. I like the smell of hot pizza, but I love cold pizza. You guys are making me hungry. All right, so, don't worry, there's more pizza. There's more pizza. Mm-hmm. You made it. And now we're going to see, this is a test. This is great, because these guys said, try it with pizza. Mm. Like they actually said it. Yeah, which makes me want to mm -hmm. try it with pizza. Which I'm doing. It's great. It's great. How did you like the pizza? Pizza was great. 
Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. How'd you like the pairing? You said the pairing was good. I like the compliment. I like the pairing. I like the wine. I like the wine. Let it be known. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's good. So, mm. speaking of comedy, yes. you've done a lot. You do comedy all the time. And I've seen several things. You did one, I don't know if you were doing it during COVID or if it just popped up during COVID. My first special. Yeah. Was that during COVID that you shot that? or shot right before COVID. Okay. And it came out during COVID. Okay. So my first special is called Six Parts in Six Different Locations. Uh, I did it with... Am I wearing the hat? Yeah. Uh, Don't Tell Comedy. Mm. So that's their whole brand. They do shows in weird places. Basically any place but a comedy club. Oh, okay. And so we did six shows. One was at a comedy club, but then it was a barber shop, surf shop, mm -hmm. other places, gym. And we just turned it into a comedy club. It was great. It was very fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was really fun. Impossible to film. Absolute nightmare. Just because of the locations? Just technical, yeah. The next special, which is currently out on YouTube, which is amazing, had to be a bit of a nightmare to put together, I feel like, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the special. So you choose, his name my special, is an interactive uh, comedy special. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure book. Basically, you will choose what you want my joke to be, and based on what you choose, you'll hear that version of the joke. So you are choosing the special for yourself. I've definitely done two different adventures so far. Yes. I'm like, I can't just watch yeah, one yeah. choice. No, a lot of people, I think well, a lot of people like going back and kind of seeing what the other side was. Can I just tell you this? Yeah. I go to see open mic nights. I'm not a comic. Really? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't get, I'm so impressed by comics. I sit in the audience at open Where mic nights. Where do you open mics out here? It used to be Ha Ha Cafe was around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've gone there. Still, still, still yeah. very close. You yeah. go to their open mic? Mm -hmm. And they're always wild. like, when are you going up? I'm like, no, 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 I just want to watch. Like, That's, I just want to watch. They must be so confused. They are. And I still have a two drink minimum. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta buy drinks then. Ha ha. But it's like, yeah. It's ha ha fine. is one of my favorite clubs. It's I fine. Like. I mean, I like to drink, so it works out in the end. I was gonna get a drink anyway. Yeah, yeah. I literally could talk to you about this for hours because I literally do love. Shout out to Comedy Club. Great comedy club. Yeah. I perform there all the time. And I, I go to the open room. mics, so. That's crazy. <laughs> so we are going to do one last thing, which is toast. Okay. So I want to know what the wine you liked best was of today's extravaganza that was all curated go, specially for you. I'm gonna go and a Eric Weirheim. Great person love you uh but i am gonna go d wade i had a feeling yeah. i had a feeling before we toast i do want to ask you would you ever put your name on a product i would always want to be unique about it but yeah i would definitely put my name on a wine i, I just would never want to put my name in general on anything bad i've been very lucky where i will say 99 percent of projects i've been involved with i've been genuinely proud of i've been very lucky where well i don't always book as much as i'd like all the time. When I book, I tend to book really good things. At this stage of my career, I don't know if I can say no to things that are bad. Mm -hmm. I definitely do things sometimes where I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I definitely do a lot of stand-up shows where I'm like, this is going to be tough. <laughs> uh, you know, this ain't going to be a great gig. Stand-up is so nice because, again, so many rooms, it's like, where's the other It's experience? just us. Yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes like the shittiest gig, again, can be the most fun. Yeah. Like, this room's awesome. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Well, here's to you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having and me. And I do think you're really funny. And I do think, cheers, think everybody should go watch his special on YouTube right now. Please do. It's really that. good. And watch it a couple times because it'll be different. So, That's true. Yeah. cheers. Cheers. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat.